Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com my name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do RBI circulars MCQs for the month of August 2024 I have already taught this particular topic in the morning ye already main padha chuka hu in the course and now I'm going to share the MCQs so it's a good way to understand ki kis tarah ke questions aapko exam mein dekhne ko milenge aur aapko kaise padhna chahiye right so uh, my name is ramandeep and this is my whatsapp number where you can contact me and ibps rrb scale to scale 3 2024 course it's available on bankexamstudy.com where we are providing video classes notes quizzes test series and live sessions link to join the course is available in the description we have the proper crash course link is available in the description so let's move on to the question number 1 okay so according to the updated rbi guidelines how must all provisions for non performing assets must be recognized they must be recognized as an expense so basically it was for cooperative uh, banks cooperative banks ke liye tha this is uh, the circular all the uh, provisions for the non performing assets must be treated as an expense right for cooperative society uh, cooperative societies right cooperative banks so what is the maximum loan amount eligible for interest subvention under kisan credit card 3 lakh rupees please remember that so what is the effective rate of interest for farmers under kisan credit card i mean i hope you already aware of it 7% hai sabko pata hai so uh, the interest subvention for the lending institutes is 1.5% is the interest subvention interest subvention or subsidy kind of a thing interest subvention is 1.5% to to lending institution to the lending institution lending institutions ko jo hai 1.5% ka interest subvention milta hai <coughs> how often must credit institution Uh, credit institutions report credit information to the CICs under the new guidelines. It used to be 30 days, but now it is fortnightly or 15 days uh, on every 15th and last day of every month. पहले monthly था, अब fortnightly हो गया. So how many calendar days CICs must in ingest the data provided right by the inf credit information companies within five working days? They must ingest the data or they must. uh you know uh, received uh, in how many calendar days cic must ingest the in credit information data received from the credit institution within 5 calendar days unhe ingest karna padega process karna padega for standard exposure to commercial real estate residential building projects what is the risk weight set by the rbi very important it used to be 100% but now it is 75% okay so that these projects re commercial real estate uh, residential building project they'll get more financing inko aur finance milega banks ki taraf se right because risk weight kam ho gaya loan sasta ho jayega in projects ke liye if an hfc has non standard exposure related to residential uh, buildings in commercial real estates uh, the risk weight applies is 7 uh, is uh, 100% so it's non standard exposure uh, we were talking about standard exposure that is 75% so as per the latest rbi circular which type uh, which type of uh, transaction in, uh, involve auto uh, replenishment of balances so all that uh, recurring transaction uh, uspe you know you get uh, the message as well on fast tag on fast tag nc mc transactions uh, the balance is auto uh, auto, uh, auto credited into the account in the fast tags right and you won't get auto debit message right auto debit ka jo message hai you are not going to get it uh, in the in the previous question all as well uh, please remember uh, it is 75% for commercial real estate residential projects the risk weight set by rbi is 75% for the standard exposure for non standard uh, it's it's maybe it's 100% right so uh, what is the interest equalization rate for msme manufacturer exporter under the ies interest equalization scheme major change under uh, interest equalization scheme it this benefit is only available for msmes now onwards and 3% uh, ka benefit is provided to the msme manufacturer exporters 
and 2% uh, which sector is excluded from 2% interest equalization benefit under IES telecom instrument sector is excluded in the interest equalization scheme uh, from which date only MSMEs would be MSME manufacturer exporters would be eligible for interest equalization scheme from 1st of July 2024 only uh, MSME manufacturers are eligible uh, MSME manufacturer exporters are eligible for interest equalization scheme. So what is the cap on interest subvention per importer exporter code uh, IEC for the extended period under the IES? the maximum benefit that can be uh, that you can get uh, under the interest equalization uh, scheme per importer exporter code is 1.66 crore rupees that is the maximum benefit uh, that can be taken which of the following is not a requirement for banks under ies charge a fixed uh, rate of interest or five percent this is not the requirement at all provide prevailing uh, interest rate to the exporters then IES uh, subvention is provided right which exporters are excluded from IES benefit if they are uh, availing the benefit under any other scheme exporters who are taking the benefit of production linked incentives PIL if they are already taking benefit under PIL they cannot uh, you know take benefit under uh, interest uh, equalization scheme what is the primary objective of the scheme for trading for trading and settlement of sovereign green bond at IFSC to enhance participants uh, to enhance non resident participants in India's green bond market and who can invest in sovereign green bond under the scheme eligible foreign investors in the IFSC they can invest as well <clears throat> which of the following activities are restricted under the scheme. Uh, repackaging or creating derivative instruments on the underlying securities what we are talking about under this previous scheme we were discussing sovereign green bond scheme in the IFSC so repackaging and creating derivatives is not allowed <clears throat> can IFSC banking units participate in primary auction of sovereign green bonds no they cannot they can uh, however they can trade in the secondary market but not allowed in primary market so I hope you like the today's short session. I have covered all the RBI guidelines with the help of MCQs. This is sufficient actually more than sufficient. Uh, if you like the today's session, you would love the crash course that we are providing for IBPS, RRB, scale two, scale three course. Uh, link to join the course is available in the description. This is our WhatsApp number where you can ask your doubts and we are going to answer your doubts. So list of our successful students in the past, all these students that took our courses and they cracked their respective exams and I'm really, really happy for them. And you can be one of them in the future. And yes, you will be one of them in the future. And that's, I guess, all for today, students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.